Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video, we're going to be covering how to script player movement, at least at a basic level, for a 2D character. Now, if you haven't already seen the previous videos, there is a package called the 2D Platformer Controller, a free asset in the Unity Assets for, uh, which for many people might be all you need. But if you want to learn how to manually script your character, this video is going to be for you. So first I'm going to go ahead and remove the previous scripts that are taken from that 2D platformer package so that they're not controlling the Jeffrey the Dude character and that we can write our own script. So we're going to leave the rigid body 2D, the animator, the box collider, and the sprite renderer as components here. But besides that, I created a new player controller script and I'm going to jump into Visual Studio right away. So in Visual Studio, I've already gone ahead and declared a couple of variables here. The float speed is going to basically be the multiplicative factor for determining how fast the character is going to move. And the rigid body, uh, being declared as body, is uh, obviously the physics component that allows it to interact with other collidable objects and receive force inputs and that sort of thing. So we're going to be um, applying our movement on the rigid body uh, so that it interacts properly in the physics engine. If you aren't doing any physics like a grid-based game, you might not need rigid bodies, um, but just for those who do. Uh, and whenever you're applying basically changes to the rigid body, you should generally do it in the fixed update method. So in order to get this rigid body, Rather than setting it in the inspector with a public rigid body, which is one way you could do it, I'm just going to use uh, git component to get that component through script. So rigid body 2D and yep, hit that method. So as long as there's a rigid body attached to the game object, it'll find that and it'll store it in the variable. It'll give an it error otherwise. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get Access input. So access input can come from a keyboard, it can come from a game controller. So the next thing that we're going to need to get is access input, which could come from a physical game controller, it could come from your keyboard. Um, but basically, rather than getting each key pressed down, up, down, left, right, or WASD, um, it's just going, Unity already knows which keys control the access. So we're just going to get the access rather than getting the key reference. So we're going to need a couple new variables here in order to store that information. So we're going to use uh, x-axis. So we're going to use float x-axis equals input dot get access raw. Um, if you need the smoothing, uh, you may want to use get access, but 2D games, generally I've just been using get access raw and it's worked fine for me. So we need to specify the axis, and that's going to be the horizontal x-axis. And then we need float y-axis, put dot get axis raw, and that's going to be vertical. Okay, so we have that information, and it's coming to us on every input. But what we want to do is we only want to move the character if the input actually isn't 0 and 0. So if x-axis is above zero, uh, or y-axis is above zero, some input, you know, as in there is some input, <laughs> maybe I should, there is some input. Uh, so now that we know that there's some input, we can modify the rigid body, and what we're going to want to do is move position. So this is basically going to let the rigid body move the transform rather than us moving the transform directly. And that's important if we're going to have collision physics in the game um, so that the rigid body is always in control of all the physics and we're not trying to circumvent it by modifying the transform directly which cause weird things to happen. So uh, we basically need to get the direction of that input and then multiply it by how much we want to move in that direction. So that's going to be, and actually we should just create this in a new variable above, make it look nice. So uh, let's, direction, and yeah, we can do. And we'll just keep this simple and make it a new vector of x-axis, y-axis. 
Another thing you could have done is uh, rather than create two float variables, we could just actually do this up here. And yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I think it's a little bit. So I'll space this out a bit for readability, and we'll just delete those. And now we'll actually do x and direction dot y. Okay, great. So effectively, it's the same thing, except now we can do direction, and I'm not 100% sure if this works for 2D vectors, but we need to multiply it by the speed and then multiply it by time dot delta time. Does that work? Um, okay, cool. So we can just multiply both uh, components of the vector 2 by that. So this is going to take the x and the y axis of the vector, and it's going to multiply it by speed and time dot delta time. So why we need time dot delta time is uh, basically we're getting the time since the last frame update. Uh, when we move it, we want to be moving it an amount that corresponds with how long the frames are taking so that it looks smooth. If for some reason a frame takes half a second, the character should jump a lot further than if it took a, like a tenth of a second, something like that. Um, so obviously, if you could get a perfectly consistent frame rate in all cases, you wouldn't necessarily need that. But uh, this is a good thing to use a lot of different methods. Basically, anything that's time or physics oriented, you'll be using time dot delta time. Okay, um, so given all of that, I think that might actually just work that simply. One more thing we can set really quick is a default value for the speed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say 5f. Don't know exactly how fast that'll be, but uh, it shouldn't be bad. Make sure that the value is actually set in the inspector as well. So I'll and let's go ahead and hit play and see how this works. Okay, so one thing we forgot to do is actually make it a modification of the current position rather than setting the new position, but it does seem to be reading the input at least, which is cool. So let's go ahead and change that. So uh, to the position should be with reference to the current position. So let's see here. Let's get uh, game object dot transform dot position plus. Will that work? Uh, what if we cast it as a vector two? Okay, that works. So we're only modifying the x and y axis, even though every game object in Unity has a z axis. We're just ignoring that because it's a game. So uh, basically, taking the two D position, the two D direction, adding those together. So let's go ahead and hit play again. Okay, sweet. So it's um, basically working. Okay, and there's a couple weird things here. And yeah, that's the, I didn't account for if uh, X or Y were in the negative X. So this should be basically that holding true. Or, and I'll put this on a new line, Direction dot y is less than zero or direction dot zero. Uh, I'm going to change this to an x over here for consistency purposes. And let's do that because x axis and y axis inputs, it can be negative, it can be positive because obviously you can go in both directions. So, yeah, let's hit play again. And it seems to be working. Okay, now uh, obviously the animation isn't changing sides, which is something we'd probably want to fix. So, uh, for instance, we could take the animator and set its animation state based on the directional input. Now, when we hit W, it's not exactly, but rather it just keeps going up until we let go. That's probably something we'd want to change if this was a side-scrolling game. So we might change that to if the jump key is pressed. But you'll notice if I press S for down, because we're modifying the movement with the rigid body, that is a collidable object right there. It will not go down even though um, we have the input set for it. So if I press down while I'm in the air, you'll notice it moves faster. But not if there's a box collider with a rigid body in it. Okay, so back in the animator, 
Uh, previously, we set up idle and walk trees, which set the direction, basically, which way the character is facing in right form based on the X and Y input. Now, in order to get that to work, we actually need to set up that input. So back in the player movement script, we're going to need to get reference to the animator, and then we're going to need to set the values in the animator, um, basically on each update. So let's get that animator component. I'll call it anim equals get component animator. Whoa. Okay, so let's see. Do we want it to happen in all cases or just when it's not zero? Uh, I believe we want it in all cases. So uh, I'll just go down here and set the animator parameters and we'll get the anim. Let's see, we're gonna set floats because that, that's what they are. Floats that are representatives of this access input. And we'll do direction dot. Well, first we have to specify. Which. So x is direction dot. And we'll do anim dot set float y is direction dot y. Now we can move this up here if it makes more sense for you. Uh, I'll just leave it there. It should work. And we'll go back into play mode and see if that changes things to what we want. So I press left and it animates to the left. I press right and it animates to the right. But as soon as I let go, it um, basically returns it to the left. So that's telling me that there might be a minor issue inside of the animator. So one option here would be to only set the values when it actually is moving. Um, and so for that moving, we would basically, if there's input, then it's going to be so anim dot set moving. Oh, we could declare this as a variable for so boolean walking. I think that's what I called it in the animator. So is walking is going to be true if it's in here. Otherwise, it's going to be false. But you know what? Even better, we can just set it to false by default. Um, and then we only want this to be set if that's true. So we can just move this into that block right there. And we should set is walking in the animator so that it can properly animate between the idle tree and the walking tree. So let's go ahead and set one more value. This should always be set. So and I'm got set boolean is walking, but not true, but the value of the is walking variable. Okay, so let's go back and that looks like it lines up. So let's try this out one more time. Okay, so it's defaulting to the left, but then when I press right um, and I let go, it doesn't immediately jump back to the left, so that's good. And while we're running, it's using the running animations. But when I let go, it uses the idle animation. So idle animation on the right, too. If I'm pressing down, it's still trying to walk. So it's playing the walking animation. And when I press W, well, he jumps up. It really is more like floating, uh, kind of like some kind of divine being. So in general, this is pretty close to what we would need for standard movement. Uh, one more thing we'll do is we'll change going up to a jump button instead. So jump by default is spaced, um, but we'll we'll look for the jump key. So let's see. So now in this game, we'll no longer be getting the raw vertical axis input. It'll just be a left, right, and jump game, um, standard platforming. So for right now, what we need to do is get the float. So we'll call this the float by jump. And we need to get from the input is, and so from the input, we're going to need to get a button down. And that's going to be the jump button. I would need to double check on if so that's actually going to be a Boolean. So what we'll do is we'll turn it into, uh, if it's true, then it spits out a one. If not, it spits out a zero. And then we'll replace the raw vertical axis input with Y jump. And in this way, it should never actually go down now, because uh, basically it's up and only up, which is generally what you want. It's kind of weird if a character can move it down low. Um, 
Now let's check the settings to make sure that that's the actual name of the key. So we're looking for input and we have jump. Okay, good, that's the right name. No, uh, it's a string name and we're comparing that inside of the script. So we'll go ahead and try this out and see. Okay, so it almost works because he hit space and he does move up, but it's only when it gets pressed. So we need a different method. So rather than get button down, we actually want get button here so that it will keep being true um, as long as it's held down rather than only when it's first pressed. So let's go ahead and hit play. And now it's working pretty nicely. Now obviously there's a new problem where um, basically there's no limit to how high he can jump. So you might need to set something like a max jump time or a max jump distance in your script. But for this video, that's going to basically cover the basics of setting things up. Uh, so more scripting in the next video.